One of the first jobs I do in April is to get the peas underway. So I've got my two gutters here and I thought I'd prepare a couple of libels. And can you believe it? It's exactly one year to the date that I sowed them last year. Hopefully that's a good almond because they had a cracking crop last year. So first thing I'm going to do, give these a rub out, put some compost in and start actually sowing the peas. I've got the compost in. I'm using the Art of Eden All Purpose Natural Compost. And there's my peas. I've said on many occasions I like to soak the peas. Uh, anything bigger than a sweet pea size with a hard coating, I tend to soak. For me, it makes it easier for it to germinate and break the shell. I know a lot of people just throw stuff in and get great germination, but that's my choice. And the choice of variety is the Hearst Green Shaft. I'll be growing these. Probably three different uh, sowings of these. This is the first one. And I'll do them at about four week intervals. So that'll see me through the season. Right, I'm gonna broadcast these. I'm not gonna bore you with it. If you wanna have a look in more detail, I have done a step-by-step -step guide of how I sow the peas. And I'll put a little video up here, you'll see it. And also there'll be a link down below. Well, carrots are still coming thick and strong. They look like a fresh crop, these do, but uh, I'm going to keep harvesting these until, obviously, they go. First of all, I'm going to be treating that bed there. I've still got some soil I've got to sieve to top that up, and I'll probably be re sowing that within the next two or three weeks. Oh, the three legged one. Quick look into the Vitapod and you can see the tomatoes have had a bit of a growth spurt. I've got some in the pots there which need pricking out, but these which have already been done need potting on. So I'll do a bit of reverse engineering first, get these into probably one litre pots and then use these pots for the seedlings which need pricking out. Right, I'm going to start potting on these tomatoes. These are about the size that I like to pot on it, and I'm going to put them into these one litre pots. A bit deeper, which allows me to plant them more or less down to the cotyledon, and the seed leaves. And that then will put on plenty of root growth. As you can see, there's a quite a big difference between the pot sizes. These will be staying in here until they actually go into the final pots, which are the auto pots in the greenhouse on the allotment. So I'll be mixing some compost up and adding plenty of food and that to keep them going. What I want these to do now is put on plenty of root growth and not so much top growth, and hopefully get them a bit more stocky. I know that these pots do take up a lot of room when you're potting on, but that's the price you pay if you don't want tall, thin, spindly plants. So I'm going to store some compost out now, add a bit of food, and I'll bring you back. I'll just briefly show you what I'm up to. The compost I'm using here is the Heart of Eden all-purpose compost. It might look a bit fibrous and coarse, but I feel the tomato plants are at a stage now where this is not going to make any issue at all. And all I've done, I've added some uh, blood fish and bone and a bit of Vitex Q4, mixed that quite well in. I popped this one in the pot, but I haven't topped it up yet, just to let you see how far I've potted it. Those bottom leaves there, the seed leaves, I'm going to remove those and just put the compost so it's just about the same level as them. And then I'll just water them from the bottom because the compost is still quite moist. Well, that's the first 16 done. Hopefully they'll carry on down and produce some nice stocky plants. I've got about another 12 to pot on and then I can start looking out at pricking out the rest of the seedlings. I've got some cells here of a uh, turnip and I must admit these have caught me out quite a bit. <laughs> this is sown on the 24th of the 3rd and the variety is called Tokyo Cross. Now the plan for these was actually to go out into the beds, but I've not got the bed prepared yet. And I've already sown some in the veggie pod, and now I'm coming up quite nicely. So rather than waste these, I'm going to plant these in here as well, so I'm going to have a good batch of them. I've got a little bit of space in one of the garlic tanks, and then uh, I'll just take them a little bit early. Just want them just a bit bigger than golf ball size. 
I've put seven plants in there, as you can see, compared to the ones which are directly sown. And I've also had three or four left over, and I've popped them in the edge of this uh, garlic tank. Well, yesterday's potting on session went very well. I think I did about 28 into the one litre pots. And now I'm going to be start looking at pricking these tomatoes out. They just start to go a bit leggy, but I could plant them deep as usual. Bit of cold this morning, I don't know if you can hear, the rain's hammering down, I've had to put the heat on. When I come into the greenhouse this morning, it was six degrees, and I think it's just gone up to about 13 or 14 now, so that'll keep me nice and toasty for this session. Anyway, I'm gonna say I'm gonna be potting these on into the these little pots here. And uh, for the compost, I'm gonna be using this here. This is the rocket drill. These are the people I caught up with at the Guardian Press event in London. And this one here is called the Peat Free Seed and Cutting Compost Stage One with added Johnny's. Never used this before. I'm gonna open the bag and I'll give her a closer look what's inside. So this is what we've got at the moment. I don't know if you can see there, there's one or two little twigs on the surface. Looks a nice fine compost, dark. And the little flecks you can see, I think, are sand, which is gonna help with the drainage. So I'll give these a try and start pricking out the tomato seedlings. Well, just put the compost in here to tap to get rid of any pockets. I use this uh, marker here to bodge out. It's a nice square bottom. And uh, these are the seedlings. What I also do, I forgot to mention on the others when I'm potting on, is bodge a bit of uh, mycorrhizal in. Put that down to the bottom and just tap the sides. And that's it, done. Starting off the beans this year, both the French and the runners, I thought I'd do a bit of uh, cheating, pre-cheating on damp towel. So I'll just bring you down there and show you what I'm doing. The runner beans are my usual favourites. That was a bench master. And for the French beans, I'm not doing the climbing, I'm doing the dwarf ones. The ones on the left are the ones I've grown for a couple of years now called Ferrari. And the one on the right was kindly sent to me by a fellow YouTuber, Steve from Digwell Green Fingers, and them are called Faraday. It suddenly dawned on me if we mark five through April and I haven't sown any flowers yet. Now normally I've usually got my dahlias and that in probably three weeks ago. So I'm unsure whether I'm gonna do any dahlias this year. However, I still want a bit of colour on the plot, so I've picked a few little pack it out here and I'll just show you what I'm going to do. Starting off I've got some pom-pom dahlias, then some zinnia, then a couple of packets of cosmos, red stripe and the other one's called apricotta. And last but not least, my old faithfuls, the sunflowers. These are my own safe seeds, probably from about four years now. I'm not sure whether those are originally Titan or American joint, or whatever they are, they seem to do quite well. So I'm going to sow the flowers in a three inch pot, then prick them out a bit later. But for the sunflowers, I'll be sowing those in individual pots because they don't like root disturbance. So that's another job ticked off the list. As I said earlier, I've done the sunflowers in their own individual pots, number 65. And the flowers, three inch pots, and I'll prick those out as and when they germinate. These are in the allotment greenhouse we now heat on. But what I've got is a little propagator lid to pop over the top there. And uh, hopefully they shouldn't be too long germinating. Although we're not completely safe yet weather-wise, I've decided to bite the bullet and sow my cucumbers and courgettes. The uh, cucumber is the mini munch. The ones I usually grow to small little loose box size. And you only get four seeds in these packets and then quite expensive, £3.35, that one was. Anyway, um, what I'm doing, I've got the little quarter seed tray here. And I use a fairly broad plant label and just put a slot inside the compost and pop the seed in sideways. Whether that makes any difference, I don't know, but that's the way I do it. And so I've got six cucumbers and four courgettes. I probably only use two courgettes and uh, down out the other two to some victim out on the island, but uh, not too bad. Anyway, I'll put the seeds in there. 
I'm just going to give these a, a coat with vermiculite on the top, just a little covering and a spray. And then I'll put a little propagator lid on because these do need fairly high temperature to germinate. And then I'll go inside the small veggie pod as well. Well, the raspberries seem to have settled in nicely. So this bed is a long-term plan. And the next thing I want to do within a couple of weeks or so is to get some steel poles up here and put some form of netting across there so that I can tie the raspberries in. And another thing I want to add, I've got a grapevine there, which has been in this pot now a good while, as you can see, it's quite well established. So I'm going to plant this down the side and the plan is for this to climb up and go along the top of the frame and hopefully south facing we should get some grapes. Right I've dug the hole out deeper than I need to, added some horse manure in the bottom, a bit of fish blood and bone so I'm just going to pop that into the there now the grapevine and that should be okay. This end of the plot is quite lower than the rest of the side so it's never ever dry. So that's in now, planted and watered. I'll leave that just lying across the bed there. They'll be happy until the side can get the structure up. We've already got one or two buds forming, so that's a good sign. Another job we can tick off the list is getting the sweet peas in. These have done very well. I've got this uh, hazel structure here, and that's done that's kept in from last year. Got a bit of coarse netting up. So I'm going to probably put two or three plants in there, really pack them out because I want a riot of colour in this bed. These cell trays are the Vizzy root from Garland. And I think I actually prefer these to the actual root trainers. They seem a bit more substantial and they've definitely got a, a lock and a click when you put them into place. You can see, no problem with the root structure in there. While I'm at it, I just want to show you this little trail planting, narrow planting trail. I'll pick this up from Lidl. I think it's only about three or four quid. Ideal, very, very strong, stainless steel. And so if we're putting stuff in like this, you can't beat it. It's got a little curved edge out the front, which is sharp, so do be careful. But if you're around Lidl, have a look at these, recommended. Well, that's them all planted and I must say they don't look too bad in there some nice thick plants um, what I'm going to do is leave them in for a few days now let them settle in and then I'll come and have another look and if need be I'll just put some loose string around the canes just to give them a bit of support and get them started so the next job for me now is probably having a look at the potatoes but rather than turn this into an epic I'm going to say goodbye to you now and I'll see you in the next one many thanks for watching Bye for now.